Hey, what's going on Facebook, YouTube? This is a video on how to feel great, right? Okay. I've been trying to upload a lot of videos, but sometimes uh, the quality messes up or it just doesn't upload for some reason. But I will take the time and go on my computer and make sure that it gets uploaded the right way and probably make some nice fancy videos like I used to. Uh, so anyway, how do you feel great? <clears throat> well, there's a lot of things that go into your mood, physically, mentally, and emotionally. <clears throat> Just last week, for the past two weeks, I didn't feel that great. I honestly didn't. But for one, I was stressed out. I had a lot of things on my mind. I had a lot of uh, unsure things. Like I knew everything was going to work out, but it was too much reliant on one thing or another thing. So when I got that in order, the stress came down. So what I'm trying to say is one of the biggest things that really have us mentally off kilt is stress. How do we bring down our stress level? Well, if you're an active person, I would suggest doing some kind of exercise that will release physical tension. And then mental tension would easily be able to dissipate by itself. If you just need the mental part then I would do something that would take your mind off of the situation. For me, I would like to play a video game. I love video games. They entertain me uh, and I can just step to the side. But then you got to come back. So how do you have it on a consistent basis that, okay, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm not going to be stressed. I'm going to take away this stress right now. But when I wake up tomorrow, I'm not going to be stressed. Like, man, I would do some breathing exercises. Like, it's, uh, there's something called pranayama. Pranayama. It takes only 10, 5 to 10 minutes. You only have to do it for 5 minutes for it to go through the system and work the right way. But if you do it for 15 minutes, oh my God. And you do that every day, you'll be a different human being completely different, seriously, and it'll cure a lot of mess that's probably in your body, so pranayama, but if you have the time, you can also meditate, and if for those of you that are not mental, you, are, you guys are not mental, but you're more physical, do some yoga, or just stretch, if you don't want to do yoga, you don't have to you don't have to just stretch it's very crucial to stretch out the limbs it does a lot of things i know people think like come on stretching you serious like how is that going to change my attitude how is that going to change my mood and how i feel it does you know why because we're so physical based our whole world, our whole reality is wrapped around the physical body. Because we say, this is me, and it's not. So you point at your body, you think your body is you, and it's not. So yoga is built to break free from that cage. Because, tell me this, when you go to work and you get stressed out, you get the tension in the back of your neck. How does something me mental become physical? Because you're so physically oriented. So when you get that stress in your shoulders and the back of your neck and you stretch out, you feel like a completely different person, right? When that tension's not there. So if you can't feel any aches and pains in your body at all, wouldn't you naturally be happier? <laughs> you absolutely will. You absolutely will. So, what do we do about our emotions? Meditation will also take care of that. Yoga will also take care of that. 
But if you want to sidestep both of those, this is what you do. This is what you can do. Our emotions are tied to the, the liquid inside of our body. I know. For those of you guys that cannot relate with this concept, you can look it up. Your cells react to your thoughts because they are water-based. They are based in water. So, um, for one, stop jugging water like it's the last thing on the planet. On commercials and on TV, they say you got to drink lots of lots of water. And your doctor will tell you the same thing because they're told that. They don't actually look into it. But it's not good for you. Drink when you're thirsty. And when you're thirsty, drink a little bit more than you want. And then just don't drink until you're thirsty again. But this only applies... If you're eating vegetables and you're eating fruit. Now, if you're a strict meat eater and you don't really mess with vegetables or you don't really mess with uh, fruit on a day-to-day -day basis, day-to-day -day basis, not oh, sometimes, then you have to drink excessive amounts of water. And it's not going to do what it should do in the body anyway but drink your necessary amount when you're thirsty and what this does is when you get a good relationship with the water you have to get good water that's not fluorinated when you get a good relationship with water you will begin to get a good relationship with the water content inside the body and emotions mean energy in motion so this water and the thought in your water is like the thought is the electrical process the energy it shoots through this water this big body of water so when this water is clean nice water let's put it like that your emotions will be just so much more clear easier to cope with because emotions last for a long time emotions become habits because your thoughts sway back and forth constantly your, your thoughts are like that's why they're associated with the, the wind because it comes and it just flows in and out in and out it's all over the place you can't touch it you can't stop it it just keeps going and you can get control over that with meditation through breathing, controlling your, your, your breath, right? But once a thought piles up, it piles up and piles up, it becomes an emotion. So if I'm thinking, oh man, I'm having a bad day, I'm having a bad day, I'm having a bad day, then that thought will become a physical feeling and an emotional reaction to that thought and it will become the feeling of feeling bad and that would stick not just for that time it would stick and it will linger so that like you know what I mean so I don't have to go on you get the point so you get a good relationship with water um and you can do that multiple ways. But the ultimate way is Buddha Shuddhi. And to wrap this video up, because I feel like I'm just going on, and some people are probably not getting what I'm saying, <laughs> like, right? So, uh, what I do, what I do, is I meditate, and I do yoga. Like, I notice, in a big way, that if I don't stretch out my body because my body is my Achilles heel because I grew up very rough in a very rough environment around a lot of uh, violence and things not in my household but like 
I lived in San Diego, California. It's a beautiful place, but there's a lot of gangs and stuff like that. So that's what I grew up. And that's what I knew. And that's how I reacted to life around me. So everybody was like kind of a, a, um, an enemy. If I didn't know you, you was an enemy. So my body was always in tension. So still to today, like tensions in my body. So when I do do yoga, it's a world it's a world of difference. It's a world of difference. Seriously. Like my emotions are steady. And then when I get the meditation in there, my mind just calm. So I can just handle things a lot easier. Like if if um if a situation usually will get me five percent stress, it'll probably just hit me right in the head and go right over my head. Like, oh, Oh, something happened. Oh, I didn't even. It's no big deal. And then when I do the Buddha shoot thing, it just enhances all of that stuff. If I do all three of them in the morning, man, I'm so blessed. I am so blessed. So, those are my tips. Those are my suggestions, in my opinions, on how to feel happy and how to become happier in your day to day thank you guys for watching like always check me out on um, Facebook if you're not on Facebook check me out on YouTube Thompson TV peace